In 1990, two-way trade between China and Africa was worth about 1 billion US dollars. By the year 2000, that number had risen to 6 billion US dollars. Last year, according to most estimates, we are talking about 150 billion US dollar uh, relationship. Now that is officially the uh, fastest intensification of trade ties that we've ever seen between two regions in global economic history. And so what I think this teaches us is it tells us a story about how Africa is changing and Africa's place in the world, but it also tells us a story about China because you cannot understand what has been happening in China in terms of economic transformation unless you understand how it has dealt with Africa. And in that respect, I think that looking at Africa uh, provides a unique lens to better understand this Chinese dream. This is what some of the critics want to make it out, saying China is just taking all the resources from Africa. This is too easy as a story. What we are seeing is that increasingly Chinese firms are also going to Africa because they see African markets as an opportunity. Not just to sell products, but also to learn something. How do we manage long supply chains? How do we operate in difficult, different cultural circumstances? How do we adjust to African consumer preferences instead of just Chinese or Western consumer preferences? Um, and in that respect, the relationship is a lot more in balance. Well, what makes me confident uh, is what I hear from many ordinary African people, which is whatever their political situation is in their country, and whatever they like Chinese products or not, almost all of them will agree on one thing. And that is that China has helped to change the nature of the conversation about Africa. Until 10, 15 years ago, um, Africa was always seen through the lens of poverty and an object of pity, a victim uh, of the international system. Whereas now, for the first time in a very long time, Africa is seen as an opportunity as an agent, as a continent that can take charge of its own destiny. And China's role in that has been crucial. China's way of seeing Africa as a partner in development, as a continent to work with, as a place where you can go to do business instead of just giving out development aid, this is a psychologically a huge thing. It gives dignity to ordinary African people, it empowers them and it allows them to make choices, to have options that they didn't have before. China has already played an important role in helping to make the psychological shift. And that's why fundamentally I'm an optimist about the future. And that I think that overall China's um, uh, role in Africa will continue to be welcomed uh, if, it, if it engages in a similar way with a similar kind of optimism uh, about the future. Now, Despite this increased competition in Africa between Chinese uh, firms, uh, other emerging countries, more established powers, um, I don't think we are heading for a, a new Cold War. Some people, particularly in the United States, uh, are warning, saying that we are going to see a repeat in Africa of what we saw in the 1970s and 1980s. That I think what we are actually seeing is a growing convergence of interests between China, other emerging powers, and the established Western powers, because in order to do business, they all stand to benefit from a more stable environment. They identify similar security threats. And therefore, I think that we are already seeing this in practice through uh, cooperation in the context of the United Nations, that actually China and the West see eye to eye on many more dossiers than people give them credit for. Oftentimes, the media and critics focus on the issues of tension. But in Africa, we should really be focusing on the issues of similarity and convergence rather than on the, on the differences. And that, I think, again, is an optimistic message uh, for the future in the first place for Africans themselves. Mm -hmm.